That was a fast trip. Yep. Squire was waiting for me when I got there. What'd you say? They picked some man for us. Yeah, they sure did. You know about him, don't you? Yeah, he took a train out of St. Louis about two weeks before we left. That's right. Well, he's already delivered that wagon train in Sacramento. Now he's on his way back. Who? Says here he's going to be at Rivers Bend. That's about 30 miles from here. Who? Dad, blame it. Why don't somebody tell me who the new wagon master is? Judd Benedict, Charlie. Judd Benedict. Wish I hadn't asked. you'd taken over, Flint. Oh, I got no stomach for this job. I've had the responsibility too long as it is. Still, if I'd known the home office was gonna pick somebody like Judd Benedict, I'd have sure stuck it out till we got to California. Uh, it's too late now. It sure is. I guess the home office knows what they're doing. I wonder. Well, I'll see you later. Where are you going? Rivers Bend. Got to show the new wagon master where his train is. Why don't you let him find his own way? Maybe he'll get lost. It's not a bad idea, Charlie. Hey. You stand here. You better come on with me. Come on, if you get on your feet and move around, I think you'll feel better. I'll be all right. You. Yeah. What's the matter with you, Stu? Nothing, Charlie. I'm not hungry. Charlie? You know who he is? Homestead, I guess. Patches burned him out. Where is he hurt? Inside. It's hard to say how bad. He had to bury his whole family. He was just sitting there. Don't know how long. Look after him, huh? Yeah, sure. You go on, Flint. Some food and rest, he may come out of it all right. Get some fresh stew right here. Check you and Coons take care of those two horses. Lift him up a little bit, Bill. He'll get the broth for him. Good. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. 
take it easy. We're just trying to help you. Well, where are we brought me? This is a wagon train. Wagon train? Oh, I can't see that. Wait a minute. You're not going any place. We're camped for the night. You start feeling better, you can leave in the morning. Right now, you better get some of that food in you. You're about ready to starve. McCullough found you. McCullough? He's our scout. He brought you in. Oh, I do. See the remembers, huh? I... Now, you just take it easy. Get some of this good hot broth in you. You've got all day tomorrow to remember. Very hungry. Tastes good. Mighty good. Yeah, hear what he said? Coffee ready, Charlie? Get your hands off that. Well, you don't have to be so grouchy. I'll let you know when it's ready. Good morning. Good morning. Well, we wondered where you were. Well, took a little walk. Tried to get a few things straight in my mind. Haven't been thinking too well the past few days. Uh, Bill and me heard about you losing your family. We're both very sorry, too. Hope I wasn't too much trouble last night. Wasn't hardly myself. Oh, we understand. Man never figures he's going to be the one to have to... have to face up to a thing like I found the other day. Anyway, thinking things out this morning, I know there's nothing more I can do back there. The thing for me to do is to move on. I was wondering if I could buy passage on your train. Well, that's no problem. That's a funny thing. Last night you talked like you'd never want to join a wagon train. Well, that was because... Uh, it doesn't matter now. That coffee and grub sure smells good. Might take me several days to catch up on my eating. Sit right down. I got plenty to get you started, mister. <laughs> Mr. Uh... Chris. Just call me Chris. Ain't you got no last name? Is the last name important? Well, it's all right, Chris. It's none of our business what a man is or what he might be again sometime. All we care about is how he carries his share of the load as long as he's with us. <laughs> Dig in there while it's hot. Thank you. Sir. How about old Bill? Bill, old Bill's all right. I'll take care of you, too. <laughs> I could ride it and roust everybody up. Roust everybody up for what? Because the new wagon master wants to get acquainted tonight. Well, half the camp's asleep. Can't he wait till morning? No, I'm afraid it can't. Like that, huh? Yeah, just like that. What's he like, Sandy? Is he as bad as everybody says he is? I'm not ready to pass judgment, Charlie. I will say one thing, Judd Benedict knows what he wants. And right now he wants everybody up and waiting for him when he and his men ride in. His men? That's right, four of them. Roust everybody up when we meet at the Hennessy wagon. Let's go. Yeah. No, he just got out of bed, but I want to say a few things about the new wagon master before he gets here. That's right, the new wagon master. 
As you know, this train was formed in St. Louis by the Western Trails Company. Most of you started with this there, and some of you are driving wagons that are owned by the company. And what I'm trying to say is that the company has the right to hire the wagon master of their choice. And they've picked a man named Judd Benedict. That's right, Judd Benedict. Now, he's experienced. He knows his business. This isn't the first train that he's headed up. But there's one thing that I want you to understand. He's going to have his own way of doing things. And they may not be the same as we're used to. But I want you to promise me that you'll give him all the cooperation he can use because he'll need it. Flynn! Here he comes now, right near. I hope I won't regret those words. What else could you say? You have to give Benedict a fair chance. I hope he does the same for us. My name is Judd Benedict. I'm going to help you folks get the rest of the way to California. And these are the men that are going to help me do exactly that. This is Lenny, Wash, and Carl. Any problems you folks have, you can talk it over with them. This one here is Muerto. I wouldn't talk to him if I were you. Now, the reason I wanted us folks to get acquainted tonight is there won't be time in the morning. I believe the daylight is for traveling and not for talking. Now, any of you folks got trouble with your wagons, I respectfully suggest that you fix them up tonight. I travel fast. I expect you to keep up with me. We'll move out at sunrise. That is all. Good night. friends of mine that I think would be pretty helpful to you. It's Bill Hawks. It's Benedict. Bill Hawks. Bill knows about everybody on the train by his first name. He'll uh, help you get acquainted. Acquainted? One of my main jobs is to get all the teams hooked up in the morning and be ready to roll. Well, that's very considerate of you, but as you can see, I brought my own men along to do that job. So I see. But there is one thing you could do for me. I need an extra man at the tail end of the wagon train tail end of the train to push the stragglers along. And this is uh, Charlie Wooster. We kid him a lot about his cooking, but he's kept us alive for the better part of four years. Wooster? Where well, you taste my rabbit stew, Mr. Benedict. Thank you very much, but Muerto over here does all my cooking for me. Oh. Now, it wouldn't make much sense having two men cook for one man, would it? No, it wouldn't. Mr. Benedict. Is somebody sleeping in your wagon? Now, I wonder who that could be. Jeff Fellow. Oh, he's a friend of ours. Hasn't been feeling well lately. Maybe we better get our things out of your wagon. Yes, and take the supply wagon to the rear of the train, please. Yes, sir. Come on, Charlie. Bill. Well, oh, Mr. McCullough, may I have your attention for a moment, please? Take it easy. Hey, you. This is mine. Over here. And this. And this. Another stuff here, too. I mean to go to sleep in there. I was more tuckered out than I thought. That's right. You sure you don't want one of your own men to take over my job, too? You have a fine reputation as a scout. I hope you can live up to it. Bill and Charlie think a lot of this train. You'll find the people on it think a lot of them. But they don't know me or my work, my men do. I'm sorry. There is no room for sentiment. 
Like the wire says, you're the wagon master. But are you the scout? That depends. I couldn't have anybody on this wagon train that was against me. I'm afraid I couldn't let you ride along with the train. You are either of your two friends. All right, Mr. Benedict, I'll scout for you. Good. There's one thing we ought to understand, though. You run this wagon train, but you don't run me. Fine. You can ride out tonight. Why tonight? You'll have to to stay ahead of me. As I said before, I travel fast. I did my best. Seems like there ought to be something we can do. Like what? The company owns this outfit and they hired Benedict to run it. Besides, he hasn't given us anything to argue with him about yet. Bill's right, Charlie. We keep acting as though he's done something wrong, and he hasn't. Until he does, we gotta go along with things as they are. You're gonna ride at the back of the train? I'm gonna scout. Unless you wanna leave the train. That's exactly what I'd do if it wasn't for these nice people on this train. Probably a good thing you're located back here. What's good about it? It's because the old people fall behind. They're the ones that need the help. Or ahead's Benedict sending you, Flint. We'll say that when I get back, there won't be any doubt what kind of a wagon master he is. Wants to keep you out of his hair for a while, huh? I think that's the plan. Well, how are you feeling? All right. I'm riding out in a few minutes. I'm glad to have a chance to say goodbye. Oh? Well, we haven't had a chance to talk very much, but I want to thank you for bringing me here. I'm thanks. Chris Hal. Well, hello, Judd. I heard you were coming here. Well, no, I am surprised. I wonder why the Western Trails Company bothered to track me down if they knew that you were riding on this train. I'm not pushing wagons anymore. I'm just a paying passenger. That's all. Yeah. Wouldn't make any more sense in having two wagon masters than it wouldn't be in having two cooks now, would it? <laughs> I'd say you ought to know as much about that as anybody, Chad. Maybe we'll get together and talk over old times, huh, Chris? Maybe. Are you, uh, Christopher Hill? Uh, there's no reason why I couldn't have told you about myself. Oh, we know more about you than you think we do. Back east every spring when we're putting these wagon trains together, everybody knows Christopher Hale, and they all talk about him, too. That's so? Yeah. I don't mind telling you it's going to be a lot easier going on knowing there's a man like you along with us. What do you mean by that? Well, evidently you know this Benedict pretty good. A man with your reputation will have a lot more influence on him than we would. That is, if he lives up to his reputation. I can't help you there. Why not? You heard me say I'm not pushing wagons anymore. Yeah, we heard. Like I said, I'm just a paying passenger on this train. Sorry I had to say that. It's no way to show my appreciation for what you've done for me. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> but I would appreciate it if you'd forget I ever was a wagon master. I'm trying to. your sassy tongue, old man, before I climb off this horse. Now, you and the rest of these folks better learn something right quick. 
But Mr. Benedict tells you something. He means for you to do it. Now, let's get that wheel on there and move out of here. Get that team hooked up and get up on that wagon. It's time to go. That's no way to make friends the first day on the job. Well, if it isn't our Mr. Hawks. That's right. Don't you worry about me or my team or when I get up on that seat. I know my way around his train pretty good. Not Mr. Benedict's train, you don't. <laughs> you keep your big mouth closed? What did I do wrong? You're free! What's the matter with you? Ah, uh, looks like Benedict's got his boys putting the pressure on already. Chris, you know this man. What's the best way to handle him? Oh, I'd do my best to stay out of his way. Be glad he has the responsibility of ramrodding this outfit and that you don't. Mr. Chris, you ain't never told us where you knew him from. Uh, it doesn't matter, Charlie. That was a long time ago. All set to go, Mr. Benedict. That's about that time I had moved about. What's your name, mister? Anderson. What about it? Well, I was just wondering. Are you always the last one to do everything? Now, look, mister. If you're looking for trouble, you just maybe came to the right place. <laughs> well, now that you're up, you uh, get that wagon loaded and get ready to pull out. I ain't finished eating yet. You are now. What do you think you're trying to do, shooting off a gun like that with my wife sitting this close? You might have hit her. <laughs> you know, one of these days, you're going to get it through that thick skull of yours, so when I say something, I mean it. What kind of a wagon master is that Benedict anyway, that he's got to bring gun slicks with him? Why don't you ask him? We're not a 
bunch of criminals, you know. What are you so afraid of that you gotta back yourself up with guns? about what I need to back me up. <laughs> a wagon master is like the captain of a ship. Anybody that defies his orders is guilty of mutiny. There will be no mutiny on this wagon train, remember that. And save yourselves a lot of trouble. Any comment? You haven't changed a bit, have you? In just one way, Chris. Now I'm the boss. <laughs> Mind if I have a look? Well, you're that new fellow that's riding with Bill Hawks, ain't you? That's right, ma'am. You a doctor? No, but I've had some experience patching people up. Must have busted it when it fell against the wheel. It hurt so powerful a lot. It wouldn't hurt so much if it was broken. <laughs> it's broke. I know it is. Oh. What are you trying to do? Oh. You'll be all right. You had a dislocated shoulder. You sure it weren't broke? No. <laughs> Leave it in the sling for a day or two until those muscles get back in shape. Uh, hey, bye, George. I, I do believe you're right. <laughs> you the better already. I sure do want to thank you, Mr. Uh, what was your name? Chris. Chris Hale. Mm, you're a handy man to have around, Mr. Hale. I'm much obliged to you. It's all right. What happened? Somebody got killed or heard a shot. That was a long time ago, Charlie. Well, it's a long way to the end of that train, too. Nobody was killed, Charlie. I just had a little fracas with the new wagon master. You mean to tell me the new wagon master done that to you, himself? Afraid he did. He's going to be a hard man to get along with. Him and those gun slicks of his. But Mr. Hill here, he fixed me up in good shape. Now, where'd he go? He's a real nice man, Charlie. Who is he exactly? You mean you've never heard of Christopher Hale? I can't say as I have. How about you folks hear him? Oh, well, I'll tell you. Back in Missouri, every spring when we put these wagon trains together, there are very few men you can call a wagon master, and he's one of them. And he's always in demand, too. Are you trying to tell us this Mr. Hale is a ramrod? Ramrod? <laughs> he's possibly one of the very best. Well, then how come them they sent on a fella like Judd Benedict? Well, I've been thinking about that, too. And I guess uh, maybe the company didn't know Mr. Chris was with us. Anyway, I don't think they could hire him as a wagon master. He won't even talk about a wagon train. When McCullough found him and his family... Hey, go with Get back to your wagon. Gotta... No. I'll help him, Mr. Hey, Hannah. You get your plate hey, there. Come on, Mr. Hannah. Let's get up here. Charlie, yeah. you better get back to your wagon. Why, if I stand right here, the wagon will catch up with me, won't it? <laughs> Come on, I'll give you a hand there now. Watch that shoulder. What's that fool Benedict trying to do? Kill off our horses? This terrible hot Hennessy. I don't remember us ever driving in the heat of the afternoon like this. Now we know how Benedict gets them trains to the coast in record-breaking time. He pushes right on, during the horse-killing part of the day. Get him, Mr. Becker? I reckon they're a little older than most. 
They're a good team, Mr. Hawks, but they gotta get rest. How much longer we gotta keep going like this? Oh, beats me. You rest in there for a while, and I'll see if they don't leave you behind. But you fly to Mr. Hawks. Something wrong with Bonnie, Mrs. Stevens? It's just that we've been going so long without stopping in the heat. We ought to have been camped in a shady spot a long time ago, wouldn't you say, Mr. Hawks? Yeah, I'd say that. Steve, you hold him here. Charlie will be along in a minute. <laughs> How's that shoulder? Oh, it's all right. But the rest of me is getting nigh plum tuckered out. Well, I'm gonna ride up ahead and talk to Benedict and see if he won't stop and let you folks rest for a while. You just tell that Benedict that we're not used to this kind of treatment. That's what I'm about to tell him, ma'am. Take care of your job. I came up here to talk to you, and I'm gonna talk. I would never want to say that one of my men couldn't oh. come to me if he had a problem. You know, for five years, I've been helping bring wagon trains west, and I've never heard of one wagon master that would push his men and his horses through the heat of the day. And just how many trains have you been on in five years? Five. What does that have to do with it? Everything. While you were riding five trains, I was heading up ten. And not by wasting half a day because somebody thought it was a little warm. Mr. Hawks, as you know, I get paid pretty well for doing my job. And it doesn't take much for you to know that you can make twice as much from two trains a year as you can from one. It doesn't take much for to know how many people you leave by the wayside to fend for themselves. Well, if people don't have the stuff for a trip like this, they uh, shouldn't have left in the first place. In the first place, the reason people travel with the train is for protection. The strong ones help the weak ones. You don't leave them by the wayside and run off if you can help it. You can run a train one of two ways. No faster than the slowest wagon or my way. No slower than the fastest wagon. People don't like your way. I'm afraid they're going to have to, as long as I'm the wagon master. Maybe they can do something about that. You know, these people spend a lot of money to become a part of this train. This trip is hard enough as it is without you making it harder for them. They might just get enough of you, Benedict, to boat you out. And just where would you stand in a case like that? It's kind of a silly question. Yeah, but I had to ask it. I had to make sure that you're the ringleader of this proposed mutiny. Voting a tyrant out of power is mutiny. Mutiny is punishable by death. You're not aboard ship, mister. And that is the only reason I'm not gonna hang you. Call him off, Benedict, or I'll gun him down. You'll gun who down? You have just seen what happens to a man who attempts to commit mutiny and to another man who tries to attack me. These two men will ride the rest of the way to California in the prison wagon. And so will the next man that defies me and the next one and the one after that. I am the wagon master, make no mistake about that. 
Any man, Jackie, you think otherwise? Now is the time to speak up. How about you? Your wagon fell behind today. Any comment? And Mr. Hale, anything to say? I told you I'm just a paying passenger. But that doesn't mean I have to listen to your speeches. Throw in the prison wagon, bring me the key. some more on, will you? Yes, sir. You know, when I get out of this chicken coop, I'm gonna pull that Benedict apart bone by bone. And all the king's horses now and all the king's... Now you just keep quiet. It's gonna help your back, none. And this water will. I feel... I wonder what Chris Hale's thinking about now. There's a limit, you know. You can push a man so far, so hard, and so long, and then, no matter who he is, he turns and fights. It comes when he don't care no more. When he'd as soon get his hide riddled as knuckle under. Well, talking up another fight isn't going to help this one, Hennessy. I've known Judd Benedict a long time. He fattens on fight talk. We can't go on like this. This keeps on. I don't expect any of us will get to California. So where are you going? For a walk. Take it easy, Fred. I just wanted to see how my friends were doing. Well, Mr. Benedict don't want anybody around this way. Well, just be a minute. How about it? Well, all right. Well, give me your gun. Sure. Well, how are you doing? Oh, just fine. I've cut that Benedict down 60 different times already in my mind. You've got to get us out of here. Well, I wish I could. Only one trouble. What's that? Well, I'm not in command. There's only one man can get you out of here. You know that. You mean you're siding in with him? I have no choice. You're not the man I thought you was. That's not the point. The point is you got a man in charge or you got a mob. He's the wagon master, approved by the company. I hate him worse than you do. I've known him longer. You got a bigger axe to grind. But that has nothing to do with what's happened. He was wrong, but he was in command. And you shouldn't have challenged him the way you did. Now, I don't want to see you hurt anymore. You just take your medicine and do what the man says. He's taken a lot of wagon trains through to California, and he'll ramrod this one through. We get to Sacramento, we'll fix his little red wagon. And not till then. Meantime, you just grit your teeth and tough it out. Yeah.
tongue finally broke. I just got the baby to sleep. I hope it doesn't wake her up. What are you stopping here for? Let's get him out on. With a broken tongue? Don't be stupid. Nobody talks to me like that. I, I, I didn't mean it. I was, I was just upset at having a broken tongue and, and no extra. Being sorry ain't gonna help much now. What are you getting at? You know what I'm getting at. I ain't no gunfighter. Anybody with as big a mouth as you got ought to be. Please, leave him alone. He hasn't done anything to you. Call me stupid. He might have a point there. Well, you cutting yourself a piece this pie, mister? You're pushing that boy into a fight he can't possibly win. That's murder. It'll be a fair gunfight. <laughs> you ain't stopping. I already have. But if you want to finish what you started, I'll oblige you. Just made the biggest mistake of your life, mister. I don't think so. You're not going to try to face me again. If you know what's good for you, you won't tell Judd Benedict you got bested at your own trade. Now get on that horse and ride out of here. And stay out. <laughs> for us already. You come to my wagon tonight, Bonnie. Your dolly will be all fixed. Thank you, Mr. Hale. Better pass the word around everybody. They better be ready for a rough trip tomorrow. I'm glad you stopped by for another reason. Charlie and I heard Benedict tell his men that he was going to cut off the trail in the morning and go through Stone Mountain Pass. How come he's doing that? Well, it's shorter, but only a darn fool to try to take a whole wagon train through there. We're going to lose a dozen wagons or more. We've got to stop him. How are you going to stop him? Look, I want you to go to Chris Hale, tell him Benedict's plans. Now, Chris is the kind of a man that can organize the people and maybe do something about it. Yeah. Maybe he could have that. I'll take care of it. Don't worry. 
on your mind. You ever hear of Stone Mountain Pass? Yeah, not far from here. Why? What would you say to taking a wagon train through there? Well, I'd say it was impossible. That is, impossible to get everybody through. You'd lose some wagons and some people. Why do you ask? Benedict is taking us through there tomorrow morning. How do you know that? Bill Hawks heard him say so. He told me when I went up to see him. Bill told me to come to you, Mr. Hale, to ask you to lead us against Benedict. Make him change his mind. I can't do that. We'd back you up, Mr. Hale. We'd run Benedict out, and you could take over as wagon master. The folks at all like that. I gave up ramrodding. I'm not ever going to do it again. But we need you, Mr. Hale. We need you bad. I'm sorry. Well, I don't understand, Mr. Hale. The way you stood up to that fellow Lenny today, I, I know you ain't afraid of Benedict. It isn't a matter of my being afraid of him for myself. You've got the experience, Mr. Hale. When a man's got the know-how to help folks that need helping, it appears to me it's his duty to do it. Duty? That's one word I've heard just about enough of. And I'm going to tell you why. For 10 years, I ramrodded wagon trains west. For 10 years, I had to leave my wife and family and spend most of my time in a saddle looking after other people. When I got a big enough stake, I was going to settle down on a nice little piece of land and make a real home for my wife and children. And just this last spring, I was making my last trip. My family was with me. Even my brother and his wife were along. And it wasn't far from this spot right here that my wife took sick and we couldn't go on. We thought this was as good a place to settle as any, so we built a house in the barn right there. Folks on the train put it up for us in one day. Now, I had a duty to those people, a duty to lead them the rest of the way to California. But I knew I shouldn't leave my family alone in this country. The only reason the Indians didn't bother my train was because I had treaties with their chiefs. But with me gone, those treaties didn't mean a thing. When I got back from California, my house and barn were burned to the ground. I had to take five graves. It was my decision that did it. Nobody else's but mine. We got families too, Mr. Hale. You could help us protect them. Then I, supposing I lead you against Benedict. His gunslingers are going to start shooting. Sure, we could probably win the fight because there are more of us, but there'd be a lot fewer of us when it was over. And some families would be a lot smaller than they are now. I'm not going to make a decision like that. Not anymore. Enough people have already died because of me and my duty. I'm sorry. I tell Bonnie her doll's all fixed.
You helped us this afternoon when we needed you. Please help us now. Now? They've gone to see Benedict. All of them. My husband, too. I guess you folks don't learn quick, do you? Well, then, uh, haven't we got anything to say about whether we risk our life or not? Of course you do, and you've just said it. Now go back to your wagons and don't come back here trying to scare me because you got a lot of people standing behind you. I got to tell you, we're not moving our wagons in the morning. Not if you're planning to take us through Stone Mountain Pass. Hennessy, I am getting sick and tired of you. I'm try a man with two arms, Judd. Like me. Or are you still hurting from the licking I gave you about eight years ago? And tell your boys not to move a hand, because I'll take you first. And you know I can do it. Chris, I wouldn't think of having you shot. And about that time eight years ago, well, uh, you're not still thinking you could do it. There's no doubt about it. And there's no doubt that it needs doing again for the same reason as before. But there's a difference this time, Chris. This time, I'm calling the shots. And you're calling them the same way you tried to call them on my train. Judd, your kind of thinking was left behind by the first people who landed in Massachusetts. These folks are no different than anybody else in this country. They have a right to speak up when somebody's trying to browbeat them like you've been trying to browbeat them. Unlike you tried to do on my train. You were too soft. I threw you out. Eight years makes a big difference, Chris. Especially to a man your age. I assume you're willing to do your own fighting? Boys, the only thing I want you to do is to see that nobody mixes in. You going to take that off? I'm going to throw you off this wagon train, Benedict. You better get an early start. <coughs> right, get out here! Come on, Come on, Come on, Get out of here! 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 Get out Get on your horse. 
up with you. Come on, move! Stay with me. As of now, we're gonna get back to doing things the old way. Thanks to Chris here. Better get back to your wagons. Have a seat, Chris. This will help you, Mr. Chris. It's brandy. Thanks. Looks like you've got a wagon train if you want it. You know, these people need a wagon master like you. They've had one all along, Bill. This is your job. Well, we didn't handle it too well. Ended up in a jail wagon like we did. Oh, you've done all right, eh? You and Charlie were standing alone. I should have helped sooner. Any man needs help. Well, you're right there, Chris. You know, there's nothing that Charlie and I'd like better than to help a man like you. <laughs> Like you said, Chris, every man needs some help. There was a gun there. Why didn't you use it? Not with a good heavy skillet, Andy. I could have missed him with a gun. Mm -hmm. 